Welcome to Welcome to the Hallwell Manor. I'm Max. And I'm Tina. And we're here to discuss Season 4, Episode 2. Charmed Again, Part 2. Well, the first part was really good. Yeah, okay, so... This one's fine. I think I think the big thing is that it introduces, not to be mean, but I think probably one of the stupidest uh, plot things that ever comes up in Charmed. You say introduces, but does that ever come back? I believe it's mentioned in the comics, like, once in, like, a giant block of exposition. But yeah, apparently witches have 24 hours after their powers are activated. Oh, no, no, 48, because it's even more arbitrary than that. 48 hours to choose whether to be good or evil, and then it sticks forever. That doesn't even make sense. I'm sorry, 48 hours after their powers activate. Did I say that part? After the powers activate, not just 48 hours in general, but... That that makes no sense. That's, that's nonsense. I mean, it kind of goes against the whole plotline for, I want to say season six. It would, it would have to be six, right? Oh, you mean when Chris shows up and is like... Trying to stop Wyatt from becoming evil. Yeah, right. So I guess... If you choose to be evil, that's it. You're locked in as evil. But if you choose to be good, you can always become evil. Apparently. I mean, it hasn't ended well for the very few demons we uh, see trying to become good or and or humans. Uh, let, let's quickly go through the list. I think there's only three, at least only three that come to my mind. Not counting the warlock from season one. I was going to count the warlock from season one. Okay, warlock from season one. Becomes a priest is good. Never hear from him again. Mm-hmm. Second one, uh, second demon trying to become good. Cole famously ends horribly for everyone. Uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert famously ends horribly for everyone. Drake, does Drake come before Kira? No, I think Kira comes first. Kira wants to be good. She's a seer. She's played by Charisma Carpenter. Dies. I- I feel like we're getting into stuff that's... I feel like we shouldn't be talking about stuff that hasn't happened yet on this rewatch. Oh, we violated that so many... Do you know how much we've talked about the series finale in this uh, podcast? I just... I just... But you're right. Yes, demons apparently can never become good. But I mean, even even if you said, okay, but a demon is not a human, right? Like, they mm-hmm. have a different thing... So it makes sense they can't be evil, they don't have, or can't be good, rather. They don't have free will like humans do, or whatever. But, why, why, why? Why? Why is it like this? I hate it. Honestly, the thing is, it's a pretty solid plot if you get rid of that one dumb, like, time frame thing. Like, if the source was just like, hey... If we turn page evil, then we'll have a powerful ally and the power of three won't exist. That would be fine. So the reason that they created this weird time window was to give a reason that the source would not immediately kill Paige when she was vulnerable. Because he's trying to turn her evil instead. But... It's a really weak device because it doesn't make sense with anything else we've learned. I mean, we saw Phoebe use her powers in the womb, and we'll see why it do the same. So, does that mean that they chose good or evil in the womb? Well, if if so, choosing choosing good didn't stop Phoebe's past life from becoming evil and it doesn't stop phoebe from becoming the queen of all hell i guess the queen of hell in general not all hell although hell seems pretty fractured yeah hell is hell is like uh game of thrones right it's like split up into seven kingdoms and we are so far away from it but there's one thing the series finale does that i really like or the final season does that i really like Mm -hmm. where they see that basically all upper level demons have been vanquished and that's why by the end of the series the charmed ones don't have to fight evil anymore but why their children will have to fight evil because the lower level demons are like you know what we're not gonna come after you we're gonna bide our time we're gonna wait until our powers grow and then we're gonna come after you know 
your kids when they are grown and able to defend themselves please don't come after us right now while we're weak and the charmed ones unlike the source are like okay well i mean they've been wanting to retire for years at that point so yeah so it is kind of a gimme the the demons do sort of have a good out there so this episode though because we're still on season four yes this episode opens with the source confronting the seer. Oh, should we do a recap? Oh, a I guess we probably should. Let's do a quick recap. Okay, so as a reminder, Prue died. Dead, gone forever, dead. I'm not okay, doing the whole you, joke yeah. again. I'm not doing the whole joke again, but Prue's dead, and luckily for the sisters, the charmed power can be reconstituted through their secret half-sister, Paige. Who uh, was seated. We knew that Patty had an affair with her white lighter, so... Wait, wait. She she probably had an emotional affair with her white lighter, but they are very clear that she was divorced before she was impregnated. That divorce had to go through... Okay, there's there are too many different conflicting things with patty and victor's relationship because he seems pretty sure that she cheated on him with sam i mean hell he's not even the same he's not even the same actor they they, they the writers care not a whit for continuity when it comes to the relationship between victor and patty yeah they changed his last name they did they changed it from hallowell to um bennett bennett but early charmed established that victor and uh patty weren't together when she got pregnant with phoebe Mm-hmm. in that 70s episode i'm sorry we're in the weeds and just the recap even so uh there's a new sister Paige, who uh th- who you know they were brought back together by destiny or whatever i think grams's ghost had a pretty big hand in it well no no they were brought back together well yes grams's ghost did have a big part in that but it makes sense because Piper cast thee to find a lost witch spell to try trying to, to get Prue back. Yeah. yeah. And it, instead it called Paige. So Paige is mega freaked out by the whole witch thing. She uh, she helps them vanquish Shax, you know, so that Shax doesn't kill her. And but... then she's like, wait, so I'm a witch now? Nope, nope, I'm out of here. And she takes off. Out, which, fair. Yeah. I mean, if you go from having zero murder attempts to one murder attempt, it's not that many more murder attempts, but it does make you think that maybe you've taken a wrong turn somewhere. You mean people trying to murder you? Yes. Okay. Because she had a murder success. Yeah. She killed a man by doing a little weird rhyming couplet thing with two rando ladies. Who? I mean, he was clearly a demon. Yes. This wasn't like, this wasn't like early Charmed where you're vanquishing a warlock and it's like, gosh, that was sure a human that I just vanquished. Although, I feel like early Charmed did try a little harder. I mean, Javna had like monster makeup on and stuff. Yeah, but but, Shax was like a wind demon. Yeah, well, Shax had effort. I feel like we're moving into the territory of demons just being guys wearing black. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whereas in season one, a lot of the times they were just, like, dudes, but sometimes they had monster makeup. Yeah. Like, um, that shapeshifter lady, uh, the rest of the shapeshifters just look like dudes, but that one shapeshifter lady turned into, like, a monster form. And then we could just assume that the rest of the shapeshifter ladies were were monstrous. Well, Well, the other two were dudes. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. God, I forgot about that whole episode. Okay, so back in this episode, the source of all evil is confronting his seer because he... He completely whiffed it, or rather Shax completely whiffed it. Yeah. I mean, she told him that... She gave him the heads up that, you know, there was another sister. It's not on her that Shax was incompetent. Yeah. It's like... the. She did her job right. It's not her fault that the rest of the organization isn't pulling their weight. Paige had been a witch for five goddamn minutes in Shaxx. That's that's really embarrassing for Shaxx off of what has to be a really big win. I write he killed Prue, who everyone keeps saying was the most powerful of the sisters. Wrong! Yeah, I'm like, I'm not sure about that, but they keep telling us that. And he killed her, and then he went out like a chump. I mean, maybe for most of the show, but... Piper really came into her own in the last few episodes of season three. Well, I mean, yeah, that's when she got 
the ability to blow things up. Yeah, she got the, I mean, arguably for his telekinesis, but really Piper's explosion is the first and I guess kind of only real finisher move. Prue had the deflect the energy ball thing back, mm-hmm. which... Which Paige will not be able to do because of the way that her power works. Well, until they stop caring and she just goes, energy ball and orbs it into, you know. Yeah. Which is slightly different. But anyway, the source who is becoming less and less intimidating by the episode. It's so weird. Like. When they first showed up in the finale of three, we were like, good job, source. And now he's like. Giant dude with like feathery wings and golden armor who is towering over Cole. And now he's. And then he was just some guy in a cloak. And now he's some scrawny guy in a cloak. I mean, it's like. It's like a halloween party city costume and what's with his voice weren't they doing like an echoey deep thing with it before now he just sounds like a guy it's so strange anyway the seer tries to tell him that he doesn't need to be all pissed off he can go sway page during that 42 hours we were talking about Yep, the 48-hour window where a witch can be swayed to evil and then she'll be evil forever. And if not, she's good and she'll be good forever, barring marrying the source of all evil or having your sister marry a uh, warlock because if a sister marries a warlock, then everyone becomes evil like in that oh, one episode God, with right? Pearl. Or just being a sexy flapper, which apparently also makes you evil. Or unless you're possessed by... Unless you're possessed by the woogie or a French stripper ghost or a regular ghost... Or, um, what was, what was the Coyote Ugly things deal? It was like a homunculus or something. It was like an energy spirit that Dwight from The Office created. Right. Uh, I guess possession shouldn't count in general, but like... Oh, really? You don't think possession should count? Let's put a (laughs) pin in that and unpin it later. (laughs) Yeah. So speaking of possession, the source of all evil comes down and possesses Paige's boyfriend so that he can be like close to her and convince her to turn evil okay i kind of love Paige's boyfriend he's got a like soft boy pop punk feel like he should be in a band that's just a word spelled wrong and then a random series of numbers he should be in mystic spiral yeah yeah but he's like a little too pretty and soft for pop punk but he's like a pretty and soft version of pop punk and i'm not saying pop punk wasn't soft you know to begin with or not to begin with i mean it's such a weird space because it's like really homophobic but also kind of homoerotic and it's these guys who like revel in being losers but also they were millionaires and a lot of them came from like rich families and weren't actually losers I'm sorry, I'm thinking about Sum 41 a lot. I did, did. Were you not involved in that era of music? No, I was not. You're, you're like getting so specific about this guy. <laughs> I feel like you, you, I feel like you're thinking of a specific person. No, I'm thinking of a general melange of people from that era. There, there were a lot of bands that it's, it's weird because they were counterculture, but they were also really popular. So it was like hot topic counterculture. And it's like, you're unappealing, but in a marketable way. Mm-hmm. I'm not a music guy, as you can tell by this. This is just my opinion as a outsider to that general culture. But So Paige comes running into the hospital and to, to see her boyfriend who's in the hospital because they got attacked on the roof by shacks. And is like, oh my god, everything is terrible and everybody is magical now and I am not down with it. And he's you know, possessed by the source, and he's like, it's okay, Paige, I'm here now. Okay, so we see him get possessed by the source, and then Paige runs in, does her whole spiel, and he hugs her, and his eyes flash black. We just saw him get possessed by the source, you don't need to remind us. (laughs) It's fine. Okay, so we go to credits, and when we come back, we're in the Hallowell's kitchen, and... Okay... Okay, so Leo got knocked out last episode by Shax before, you know, they killed Shax. And Phoebe asks Leo how, if he's, you know, an angel, how can he be knocked out? He's technically dead. Okay, bringing it up doesn't make it better, Charmed Writers. Yeah, because Leo says, three years and you're asking now? And it's like, well, 
don't bring it up if you don't have an answer for it. What, what, what are we doing? What, ugh. Also, there's this weird thing about white lighters not being able to self-heal, which is kind of what they do. That's well, No, no, he says I can't heal myself if I'm knocked unconscious. I kind of assumed self-healing was an automatic thing, although I guess it's not because, like, if a dark lighter shoots you, you can be healed by another white lighter, but self-healing doesn't work on that. Hmm. Phoebe and Piper also want to know how it is that a white lighter can knock up a witch and a half white lighter can be born without the elders knowing about it. Piper, you would have had to have thought about this at least a little bit. Oh, no, 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 not the getting knocked up bit. The how oh, is the it elders, yeah, yeah, how no, is no. it the elders don't know? And I feel like that's a good question that doesn't have an answer either. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially if the elders are like, A, we know they're kind of omnipotent and can sort of see the future, but not enough to stop them from getting slaughtered at the end of season six. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry, season five. Yes, season five is when they all get wiped out, because that's the thing that introduces Chris. The thing with the Titans, where the girls become the Greek goddesses of whatever, and Leo becomes an elder, and then Piper immediately acts like they're divorced, even though why would that be the case? You're really getting ahead of things here. I'm sorry, yes. So, Leo's like, I don't know, I guess I could check with the elders or whatever, and Piper's like, I don't think this is the situation for that. So, Daryl comes in, and he's very upset about his partner disappearing. Uh, You will recall last episode, they cast a spell to send him to Timbuktu. Yeah, Daryl's new partner caught them doing witch stuff, and his whole thing is that he's obsessed with catching them being witches because there has to be a character like that every season. And the sisters, after he caught them talking to ghosts, teleported him to Timbuktu. Okay, so I kind of love this part, though, because they're like, it's okay, Daryl, we sent Cole to take care of it. And Cole comes back, and after he takes out a bounty hunter that has been following him, they're like, oh, Cole, where is uh, where is the inspector that we accidentally sent, accidentally on purpose sent to Timbuktu? And he's like, don't worry, I took care of it, I put him in hell. And it's like, that's not, Cole, that's not what we, that wasn't our intention. He's like, but he you're in danger as long as he's after you and they're like but we're the good guys called he's like you can't just send people to hell cole you're not the new mutants is that too esoteric a reference they were they were uh the kid x-men team in the 80s and one of them had the superpower to teleport people into hell so i think i realized one of my favorite tropes is an evil character trying to become good who doesn't realize what good is like what evil is like in the descendants movie where they're like oh oh just pick the boring one don't poison the apple okay okay i'm with you now or in the good place when michael's like well okay i see the problem here is how to kill the one guy on the track and still take out the other five so cole's like if he comes back and he exposes you it's going to be the situation that got prue killed all over again which isn't true. That's the situation that got Piper killed in the, I guess, now alternate timeline. <laughs> but whatever. And I mean, they're now like, that Prue is dead, they can really justify doing a lot of morally questionable stuff by just saying, hey, we saw the dark future where witches were discovered, and so now we're justified doing a lot of heinous shit. And they saw a dark future. Although, as, as discussed, the season three finale is basically just a much, much better version of morality bites Mm, mm. which i know is famously one of the best episodes of charmed but i'm sorry i think the season three finale did it better i no, i i think i think morality bites is not a good episode like it has some very good ideas but Mm -hmm. anyway they're like we should probably get Paige because cole mentions that the gargoyles have become active because gargoyles come to life to defend churches against churches and banks against the source of all evil no no i'm okay that's that is what gargoyles are yeah that's that i'm that's i'm fine with that i mean it's a it's a little silly though that you know you're fighting the source of all evil and a gargoyle comes to life and it's just like it's it's not just the source of all evil when there is great evil in the world they're activated so when they become active and awake that's when you know that there's some great evil walking around on earth you know, the plot of I, Frankenstein, the Aaron Eckhart Frankenstein movie, is that he fights gargoyles. I did not know that. 
Um, I will say that this is very similar to in Twilight when the uh, the werewolves resurface when vampires are around. So do you think there's like a werewolf guy who's just really into being a werewolf, so he's constantly trying to find vampires just so he has an excuse to be a werewolf all the time? Um, I'm sure that's not how no. it's supposed to work. No. I like the way gargoyles are in the TV show Gargoyles, where just at night they come alive, and then when the sun hits them, they turn to stone. Mm. And then you just you have to be back at home base by, by the time the sun comes up, otherwise things get super awkward, because you turn to stone, like wherever you're standing. Also, you're vulnerable, or as vulnerable as a giant hunk of stone is. Yeah. I mean, I guess peasants probably didn't have, like, sledgehammers or anything, so you were probably pretty safe back in the day. Well, I mean... Gargoyles, the cartoon, takes place in modern, modern times. Modern being, thir- Jesus, 30 years ago when it was on TV. Yes. But it started in old-timey times. Then they were cursed by that guy. Yes. So, Cole and Leo are going to go down to hell and fetch this inspector and also convince him not to, you know, let the whole world know about witches. I love when Cole and Leo team up. The whole, like, angel demon thing, not enough of that in this show by half. Like... Seriously, it's so much fun because Leo's just this giant wet blanket, like, I don't know, Cole, maybe you shouldn't murder people, and Cole's like, meh, 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 meh. I was thinking, I, I want, like, a whole show of this, and then I just realized that show does exist, and it's called Good Omens, <laughs> and it's Azraphale and Crowley, and maybe I should just sit down and rewatch Good Omens. So, back at Paige's apartment, her <laughs> bird is freaking out because her boyfriend is possessed by the source of all evil. It's the kind of thing that you would normally have a dog do, but Paige doesn't have a dog. She has a bird, so the bird is freaking out. Or a cat. Kit Watch 2022. Kit is gone forever now. Yeah, this is exactly what Kit should be doing. But, yeah, no, the thing is that um, birds are little psychopathic they're they're little psychopathic (laughs) dinosaurs anyway so i don't know how much of a tip-off it is that this bird is being weird and freaking out (laughs) a bird being weird how unusual so the source almost kisses Paige in this dude's body but then she's like no wait i sense something off well by i i guess i better go into work and he's like hey is there anyone you really want to murder at work like is there anyone who you think the world would be better if you murdered? Is there someone murdery that you want to murder to death with your superpowers? And Paige is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have to go. Yeah, he's doing the he's doing the Audrey too. A lot of folks deserve to die thing. And he like uses his magical power to pull a memory out of her head. And he's like, what about that guy who's going to do the placement hearing who is definitely abusing his son, but you have no evidence? So he's going to end up keeping custody. And she's like, I definitely didn't talk to you about that because that's definitely confidential stuff that I don't talk about. And he's like, but what if you did? And she books it out of the apartment and he fries her bird. That's the other reason it's a bird and not a dog or a cat. Because apparently you could just kill birds on TV and it's fine. Bye bye, birdie. Boo. (laughs) Yeah. Boo. (laughs) Who's the source of all evil now? So, down in hell... Why do I keep adding all into these things? The source of evil. Is he the source of all evil? No, he's the source of all evil. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Anyway, we're in hell now. Uh, Inspector What's-His-Bucket is... Cortez. Cortez is clinging to... I love that this is a reoccurring set here. There's just a place in hell that's a giant fire pit... That has the, these little outcroppings that you can just stick people on. Yeah, it's a little ledge. And this comes back all the time. Like, there are so many demons who end up getting stuck here. And Cole's like, look, he's fine. And Leo's like, he's seconds away from plunging into an eternal fire. And Cole's like, it's fine. He's fine. Leo's like, here, I will save you. Take my hand. And the guy's like, no, I'll never take your hand. You're evil. And those uh, those girls are evil, and if I come back to the mortal world, I'm going to tell everyone how evil those three sisters are. I'm sorry, two sisters and one random woman. And then, as you pointed out when we were watching this episode, Cole literally gets to be the demon on Leo's shoulder. It is like, 
Let's just leave him here. It's so great. He leans over Leo's shoulder to whisper in his ear. I love it so much. But that doesn't work. Leo Leo takes his hand and they orb out of there. Well, he almost falls and Leo catches him. It's it's weird that I don't know. It it seems like they built up tension that is immediately diffused by the fact that Leo just orbs them away. Like, I feel like Leo should have had to catch him and pull him up. But of course he doesn't because he can orb. It makes sense in the context of the show as we know it. But I feel like it robbed the moment of some of its uh, drama. Yeah. Yeah. So in the bathroom at Paige's workplace, the man she was talking about, the guy she suspects is hitting his son, is washing his hands and uh, in the bathroom. And the source orbs in. And possesses him. It voips out of her boyfriend and voips right into abuser guy, except not really, as we find out later in the episode. Mm -hmm. And Paige is... He's not really an abuser. He does voip in there. Yes, yes. The source source possesses him. Paige, meanwhile, is on the phone with one of her relatives trying to get the name of the church that she was abandoned at so she can go talk to the nuns who arranged her adoption and she goes, so goes to yell at her boss about how he definitely can't let this guy have custody of his kid. And the guy, like, stares at her malevolently through the window of her boss's office because he's possessed by the source. Through the blinds. It's great. She, she's, like, yelling at her boss. She's like, you can't let him take that little boy. He's hurting him. And the, her boss is like, shut up, Paige. You're just an assistant. You're not a real social worker. And she's like, only because you don't want to pay me my full paycheck. Which is, by the way, ridiculous because they absolutely would have her if if this is what she wanted they would absolutely have her do the work of a social worker and just keep her at the salary she's at now yeah yeah and i just i love the source possessed guy is just staring at her through the blinds and then her boss enters the office sees him staring at her through the blinds and then just closes the blinds in her face i yes what does he think is going on here I, he probably, honestly, he probably thinks Paige has been antagonizing this guy. Mm. So, back at the Hallowell Manor, Piper is going to go to the church that Paige was abandoned at to try to find Paige. So, guess where everything's going to converge? Mm. And also, Phoebe is like, oh my god, this is Prue's sweater. Remember when I stole this sweater from Prue and I stained it? And it's like... Phoebe, this is not the sweet sisterly memory you think it is. Like This is a story about you being a bad sister. Phoebe's like, I said Phoebe, Alyssa Milano's like, hey, you know all those really dramatic moments Holly Marie Combs got last episode? Can I have one of those? And the writers were like, you know what, let's really fuck with Alyssa (laughs) Milano and give her the worst speech ever. Yeah. See, last episode really leaned on Holly Marie Combs being sad because she's, like, the best actress in the show by a lot. Mm -hmm. And this episode's like, hey, we didn't really show Phoebe being sad, right? Let's give her her moments to shine. Oh, Phoebe even says, you know, I was trying to stay strong because I figured only one of us could, you know, break down at a time. And now it's my turn to break down. And she's just not the powerhouse that Holly Marie Combs is, which is, you know, not nothing against Alyssa Milano. Who, she's fine. Who she, is. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a good actress, but Holly Marie Combs is next level when it comes to this specific subgenre of TV shows. She's a good actress. But also, like, they're not doing her any favors with this terrible monologue about stealing Prue's sweater. No. It's terrible. Why didn't they, like, reference something that actually happened in the show? Like, Barbus or whatever. Like, how Prue was always the one to get her out of trouble, and now she's not here anymore, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Anyway, that's not what they did. Yeah. So, she got her moment to be sad, and then we're back with Paige, who's like... She's literally pacing outside her boss's office. Like, I I don't know what you think you're going to accomplish... I mean, I, I get it. I get that. I get that she feels like she has to do anything she can. She has to do whatever she can. But I mean, she confronted him. He shut her down. She's gonna stand out here and confront him again. Like, anyway, he comes out and he does not 
he he doesn't back down. He says there's no evidence. We're not we're not taking this kid away from his parents. And then the father, who remember is still possessed by the source, is like, "Ha ha! I won. I'm gonna go home and continue to be an abusive piece of shit." And she's like, "Did anyone else hear that?" <laughs> yeah, her boss is right there. And then a uh, possessed abusive dad guy's wife, who is blonde. His blonde wife is like, come on, honey, let's go. My hair is kind of crimped, but only a little. So it's way more distracting than if I had crimped hair or regular hair. It's like they didn't have time to finish doing her hair. No, I thought it was crimped, but it was like crimped the way you would have done it in like the late 80s. And this is the early 2000s. Mm. So the, the dad goes into the bathroom where the source first possessed him because Paige's boyfriend is lying there unconscious since the source abandoned him this old man is trying to help him out and this old man's like oh no help me this this young man had some sort of attack and the source just bloips out of uh the abusive dad's body bloips back into uh page's boyfriend's body and kills the old man like fries him with eye beams <laughs> it's like why did we need that like were you worried? Were you worried that we wouldn't understand that the source of all evil is a bad guy if you didn't show him killing that guy? Like, he, he already... He, he, he killed the bird. You didn't need to have him kill an old guy, too. Just a random guy. This is why you don't help people. Mmm. No good deed. Yeah, it gets you incinerated. Okay, I feel like the gargoyles in this building are the gargoyles from the intro to Buffy. And I'm I'm sure they're not. I'm sure that's just what gargoyles look like. But they remind me of them so much. Anyway, Paige goes to the uh, church where she was abandoned as a baby. It is a massive Catholic church. And she kind of, like, covers up her cleavage. She's like, oh, oh, maybe the way people dressed in Charmed is not appropriate for a church. So she, and I'm not I'm not okay with like anyone, especially not the church, uh, slut shaming people. But I I feel personally I don't I don't have any evidence for this, but I feel personally like this was a choice that Rose McGowan made to comment on what they were putting her in, mm. and I support her making those kinds of choices if that's like what she wanted to do. I feel like this is kind of an interesting callback to season one where churches were more of a presence in Charmed. Piper had that uh, subplot in, like, the second episode about being nervous about going into a church once she found out she was a witch. Mm -hmm. That warlock guy escaped from, you know, his dark destiny by becoming a priest. I feel like the church was more of a thing in season one of Buffy. Yeah. Charmed, my god. So, you asked when we were watching this, you said, oh, so, Paige is Catholic. Paige was raised Catholic. She was adopted by Catholic parents and raised Catholic. Mm. Um, and and she she was like from from this we can we can gather that that's the situation. I don't know for some reason that's as as a as a lapsed Catholic myself I'm I'm interested in that as a concept. Mm. We know that the church that you're talking about that Piper was hesitant to walk into was not a Catholic church. So we can assume that the Hallowell sisters were not raised Catholic. So I don't know. I'm just going to keep an eye out for whether or not this is a thing with Paige that is consistent. Do you think Grams was a churchgoer? Because I feel like, honestly, either way kind of works. I could see her completely avoiding, you know, Christianity as a concept. But I can also see her really thriving in that sort of community. I mean, she must have been a churchgoer to some extent for Piper to have a background in the church to such an extent that she felt strongly about it because, you know, Graham's raised them. Yeah, and uh, Phoebe mentioned that it had been a while since she went to church. It raises a lot of questions for me, though. It doesn't, it doesn't really seem to fit in with Graham's character, does it? Yeah, and although uh, it's it's weird because we know Prue had a Wicca uh, had a Wiccan funeral. See, this is what I would expect of Grams. I would expect her to be a Wiccan, to be a solitary practitioner, 
who is involved with the local Wiccan community, unlike the sisters, but is kind of on the outside of the community because she knows that she's more powerful than they are, so she doesn't really get involved with them. Well, remember, in How to Make a Quilt Out of Americans, it was established that her sewing circle or whatever was actually a coven. Right, right. Although she was by far way more powerful than everyone in that coven. So was she just going to the church as a cover to, like, have a religion with the girl? I I don't know. It's all very strange to me. Maybe that's how she met all her husbands. Through the church? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so Paige finds a nun, and the nun gives her her whole backstory. You know, her parents appeared in a cloud of white lights because she comes from angels, and I was but a novice then, and they did not cast an actress old enough to pull this off. She looks like five years older than Paige. (laughs) But she's like yes i was there at the night when your parents came you come from angels you're something special and they told me to give you a p name maybe piety is just good for your skin did you ever think about that no i've seen actual nuns in real life before wow so mean yes so (laughs) then she gives actually the nuns i saw looked pretty young but they also worked in an active abbey are all are all abbeys active is that a thing what do you mean by active like they were self-sustaining they had like a farm and stuff oh um yeah so nuns are technically not part of the clergy they're lay people Mm -hmm. and so uh abbeys uh nunneries while they are under the control of the church because you know they're catholics they are kind of all Mm self-governed and there are actually some really cool nunneries where the women have been like you know what (laughs) fuck the church and they're still a nunnery but they are they have split from the catholic church yeah uh back when i was in elementary school uh one of my teachers was a farmer and he used to do trade stuff with a local abbey and we'd Mm -hmm. we'd go there sometimes uh for like field trips and stuff it it was really cool because it was a whole like self-sustaining thing oh yeah they're not all like communes they're not all self-sustaining communes but yeah they are you know their own self-governed bodies so the the nun also gives Paige the the pea blanket that the blanket with a pea on it yes that that she was wrapped in when her mom and dad dropped her off so sam did know about Paige then yes yes weird i mean i guess it makes sense he didn't mention it to the sisters in the episode he showed up in but yeah i guess (laughs) but uh yeah, mid conversation with the nun, Piper shows up and freezes her and is like, "Wow, good thing I didn't accidentally blow her up." A horrifying thing to say in front of your new sister, who you're trying to calm down. And then like Piper tries to grab the blanket and she's like, "Hey, is that my baby blanket?" And Paige is like, "No, it's my baby blanket. You know how we have the same mother? We we had the same baby blanket." And then she starts to run off and Piper's like, don't make me freeze you. And then Phoebe says really loudly, but Piper, good witches don't freeze. And Piper's like, she doesn't know that, you idiot. But also, like, maybe don't be threatening her with your powers if you want to convince her that you're the good guys. Okay, what the hell is up with Piper in this scene? Uh, We're going to get to it really shortly, but there's a bit that I want to talk about possibly at length. So... Phoebe to try to tempt Paige from running away is like, you know, you have a superpower too. And Paige is like, oh, and Piper's like, yeah, if you are our sister, like Prue, then like Prue, you're going to have telekinesis. You're going to have the ability to move objects with, with your mind. Mm -hmm. And Phoebe tells her, wave at that candle. And I do love that Paige just kind of waves at it. And since it doesn't do like the zoom in thing or whatever it did with, I guess that was more when Prue focused her power through her eyes, which they also mentioned because she waves at a candle and nothing happens. But she does it so half-heartedly. She's like, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. And then Phoebe's like, she also narrowed her eyes. Can you try narrowing your eyes? And Paige is like, mm, see, nothing. Nothing happened. The candle! And then the candle orbs into her hand. And... Yeah, and then, okay, so it orbs into her hand with, like, white lighter orbs because that's the way her power has manifested since she's half white lighter. Or, as Piper says, hissingly under her breath, half breed. 
Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? What? What? What the fuck, Piper? Yeah, because Phoebe's like, oh, huh, I guess your power works differently than uh, Prue's because you're half white lighter. And Piper just, yeah, in the harshest tone possible, calls Paige a half-breed. She's not possessed or anything. It's such a weird... Also, can I just remind everyone that Piper is married to a white lighter? Like... And, and theoretically wants to have kids with this white lighter. What the fuck, Piper? I mean, I know you said you were going to talk about this at length, but I don't know if there's anything at length to say other than what the fuck? Yeah, like... yeah, What? I mean, okay. Weird note for... Weird note for Piper, I guess Piper's racist against half white lighters. Like, what? I thought they saved this for later in the show when everyone inexplicably hates leprechauns for no reason. I mean, I think what they're going for is that she's angry that Paige exists, both because she's not over Prue being dead and also because she's mad that her mother had an affair and then it had a secret love child and didn't tell any of them. But that's not an excuse for, like... Half-breed, my god. What the fuck, Piper? So if this horrible moment is interrupted by the source of all evil, thank god. Thank god the source is here to break up this awkward moment. Okay, okay, so he goes to the church, and, like, he sees the gargoyle, and he, like, hisses at the gargoyle, and the gargoyle hisses back at him. It's like when two dogs pass each other on the street. Okay, how did they immediately make the source the least threatening person on the face of the planet? Like he's 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 hissing at a gargoyle. This is this is the big bad of this show. This is the big bad that the show has spent what is it? What three seasons building up to at this point? Yep. Guy who hisses at gargoyles. So he uses laser eyes on Piper and Phoebe. Uh, yeah, so so Paige is leaving with him, and they're like, oh no, we have to stop them, and he just turns around and blasts them with his laser eyes and shoots them back into the church. So you don't want to, like, like, try pa to- Paige didn't notice that happen? Yeah, A, Paige didn't notice that happen, and B, like, was that your best shot? Because it's really sad if your best shot just kind of knocked them on their butts for a little bit. Oh, you mean the source's best shot? I thought you meant, was that the Charmed One's best shot? Because- Piper didn't even try to freeze him. So, back at the police station, Cole is threatening the inspector that, like, hey, you know, I know that you want to expose the sisters, but if you do, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you until you die from it. I'll murder you with my demon powers. I will bring you to hell and murder you where no one will ever find your body because it will be in hell. And the inspector's like, I want a surveillance team on the Hollowell sisters. Yeah, they're murder suspects. And I know I brought this up last time, but can I just can I just reiterate that he suspects that they might have used wind power to throw their sister and some random doctor through a wall? Although I guess I guess at this point he knows that They're he knows that they're magic at this point. But how is he going to present that before a court of law? Cole leaves instead of immediately killing this guy and or bringing him to hell. And Daryl comes up and he's like, hey, so I I don't know if you know this, but those sisters do a lot of good. And I know that they're attached to like every missing person's case that crosses my desk, but they're the good guys. And if you try to stop them, that makes you one of the bad guys. And the inspector's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So... Back at the manor, I mean, I guess, I guess we're not, I guess we're not worried about Piper and Phoebe being murder suspects, but eh, whatever. back at the manor, they're wondering why the source hasn't just taken out Paige since she's, you know, a brand new witch and super, super vulnerable. And then we go over again that she has 48 hours to choose good or evil. And if a charmed one joins the side of evil... All will be lost because the balance of power will be tipped too far into the scales of evil. If a charmed one becomes evil, the battle between good and evil is lost forever. The all is lost moment. <laughs> so they've already been evil by this point. Remember when they shattered, when they froze and shattered you, Leo? 
because Prue married a warlock and that made them all evil automatically because evil is transferred by marriage to the entire family. Right. Leo even points out that the source can't just brainwash her or possess her. It has to be her choice. But apparently, like, they can be turned evil without making a choice. So they're not sure how they can possibly find Paige, but then we see that she's just at her apartment. Okay. Scrying. Leo is her white lighter. A third option. I mean, you don't need a third option. The first two. To find a lost witch spell? To find a lost witch spell. There, third option. But, like, you have multiple ways to find Paige right off the bat. Like, come on. So, they they just... They, they just do not know... They have lost all common sense. They go upstairs, they go up to the book, and they're like, ah... We know that some sort of magic, but we don't know what to do. Grams, please open the book to the right page. Lazy. <laughs> Lazy, but Grams does, or maybe someone else did this time. <gasps> I mean, they say that to imply that it might be Prue, but it's obviously Grams. Yeah, it's obviously Grams. But Grams opens to a, a They Live spell. Yeah, it's an enchantment spell that allows you to see the truth underneath a person so like they'll be able to see who it is who is possessed by the source of all evil yeah it's it's a spell that reveals the evil inside and you cast it on a pair of glasses which uh this seems really unnecessary like maybe maybe the source is in that guy who shot eye lasers at you (laughs) also do you really need to know who the source is possessing isn't your priority shouldn't your priority be convincing Paige to not do evil things like shouldn't you be working it from that angle whatever they cast the spell on a pair of absolutely fabulous sunglasses they're like they're like pink children's gas station sunglasses and phoebe puts them on and she looks at leo and she's like i don't think they worked leo looks exactly this he's an angel he, he, he looks exactly the same because he's an angel, Phoebe. Then Phoebe looks at Colin. Uh-oh, it's Balthazar. Okay, okay, so I kind of love this because she looks up at him and he says, um, what do you see? And she says, you look like hell. And then we see Balthazar kind of give this sexy little half smile. I'm like, I'm like, oh my, the monster fucker in me is, uh, has been awakened. <laughs> Maybe don't show Balthazar in the same episode where you, you know, make the source a completely, a complete non-threat because you're like, oh, look, look how intimidating Balthazar looks, as opposed to the literal source of all evil, some dude in a cloak. I thought you were going to say maybe don't show Balthazar in an episode where you're trying to convince people that they shouldn't choose evil. (laughs) So, okay. So. Paige took a shower, and when she comes out of the shower... She's, like, watching herself in the mirror, and her boyfriend, who is possessed by the source, like, comes up behind her, and he's, is, like... He's also naked now. Yes. Or at least shirtless, but presumably naked. But he's, like, use your powers to do what you want to do, and he, like, uses the mirror to show the abusive presumably dad. abusive father, and... He's like, I'm going to hit my son. I'm going to keep hitting him and I'm, I'm going to keep, I'm going to hit everyone. And the source is like, ooh, you should kill him. I'm telling you to kill him and I'm using magic to influence you to kill him. But for some reason, this doesn't count as possession. Ooh. No, 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 it's still her choice. He's just, he's just incepting the idea into her. And then she, like. I don't know. She's acting pretty possessed through this whole thing. Also, she's way more competent at using her powers now. Well, she, like, raises her hand and causes the mirror to split up into CGI shards. And then she... Okay. Okay. So... Thank God she's doing the slowest orb ever. All of the things that you had to say about the sequence where Piper decided to be racist for some reason, I have to say about the sequence. So... Back at work, she sees the father leaving, and she orbs his heart out of his chest, but so slowly that he's basically just writhing around in the ground, feeling his heart try to leave his chest, and she's just standing there with her hand out. And then, you know, the cavalry pulls up, 
And Phoebe puts on the glasses like, you need they live glasses to figure out what's going on here. Do you not see Paige with her hand out and the guy writhing on the ground? Well, she sees a black haze over Paige and she's like, she's been influenced by evil, but she hasn't been completely taken over by the source. Paige, you need to stop orbing that guy's heart out of his chest. And Paige is like, no. And then Phoebe's like, oh, Leo, just orb her away. Yeah, so Piper's like, fuck it, and just pushes her hand down. <laughs> Leo just grabs onto her and they orb away. Then then the guy, presumably having been near death and realizing that he was going to die and leave his son with an abusive parent, says to the mother, I'm not going to cover for you anymore because it turns out, twist, it's the mother who was being abusive. But nobody's around. Nobody hears this. The sisters don't hear this. They don't get any closure on this. Paige doesn't get any closure on this. And we, the audience, get no closure on knowing that this kid is now safe. Never comes up again. I guess as long as Paige decided not to use her powers to protect a child, uh, everything else is fine and dandy. Don't worry, all the husband has to do is point out that his wife has blonde hair and she'll be, you know, arrested immediately. So Cole approaches Paige's boyfriend, who is possessed by the source, because he's possessed by the source, and he spins around, like, he approaches him from the back, and he spins around, and I guess he had a knife in his hand, and he just stabs Cole with it. He's like, gonna just stab you, and it, like, cuts through him like, like he's made out of butter. It's just, <laughs> boom. <laughs> This is embarrassing for Cole. It really is. I, I mean, know he's the source of all evil, but come on, Cole. Remember when you took out the triad when you were wounded and then you're just going to go out like this? Yeah. Yeah. Also, Cole, notably one of the demons at this point that does not require a power of three spell to vanquish. Like, you can just stab Cole a whole bunch and he'll die from that. Yeah. It I doesn't mean, seem like that. That doesn't seem right, does it? Well, everyone else in his brotherhood, the the brotherhood of Taraka or whatever, I think that was oh, a Buffy God. thing. Yeah. But he was part of that evil brotherhood that, you know. Yeah, but they were like a social group. Phoebe staked one of them and it killed him. Like, these guys, they, they died from splinters, to quote Dawn. Yeah, but I mean... Their power level doesn't have any reflection on Cole's power level. They were more like a fraternity than, like, it's not like they were the same species of demon or anything. It's just weird that they were talked up as this, you know, big honking deal, but all of them could... None of them needed a power of three spell, or a vanquishing potion, even. Yeah. Like, Cole was really slumming it by being in that group, even if he is a demon that you can just kill through stabbing or whatever, which... They were sweating him a lot, considering how easily he can apparently go down. I think Cole is like a glass cannon, where it's like, he he's dangerous because he himself is such a powerful mercenary demon, but you, you... Oh no, my weakness! Tiny little knives! I feel like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies were underrated. I didn't see them, so I don't know, but yeah, I think so. so Just based on that one line. Yeah. Well, he actually quipped in those movies, and people really like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, and they're good, but he's not super quippy in them. Spider-Man yeah. needs to quip. It's true. So, back at the manor where where Leo has orbed Paige, she's just, like, having a fit, and I'm here for it, because she does not want any of this. So she's she's got her powers now, and she's like, LAMP! <laughs> KNIFE! So, the source of all evil shows up, and he just telekinetically throws Piper into the stairway. And then he tries to fireball Phoebe, but she zoops out of the way. Right, because she's uh, she's got that levitation still. Yes, that was not a possession zoop. That was a levitation, yeah. Phoebe levitates. Piper blows up the source, but he reconstitutes. Let's hope that's not just evil holding his body back together because that wait, would... Wait, wait, no, okay. Piper blasts him. He reconstitutes, and Phoebe runs to get the glasses to put them on. Okay, I actually kind of love this, because she puts the glasses on, and she looks at the source and sees the source, and she she grabs Piper, and she's like, Piper, that's the source of all evil. And Piper's like, yes, 
Obviously! I knew that! I love that Piper points out the fact that the whole glasses thing was pointless. The glasses thing was completely pointless. Anyway, he... he's... They're basically doing the thing where they both stand on one side of the room and call to Paige, and she has to decide which way she's gonna go. And the source of all evil is doing a better job at tempting her, I guess, because he's like, you'll be safe if you embrace my way, and you can have everything you want. Your boss will finally respect you, and she shapes it, he shapeshifts into uh, her boss, and this little boy will be safe forever, and he shapeshifts into the, you know, kid who's getting beaten. Honestly, it's a very compelling argument until, <laughs> in the form of the little kid, he starts tossing Phoebe around and electrocuting her. It's like, if you're trying to convince her that she should use her powers in an evil way to save children, maybe that child should not be children of the corning over here. Yeah, he's like, you need to protect me. And Phoebe's like, don't listen to him. And he's like, force lightning! I... <laughs> and then uh, Paige heroically punches a child in the face, thus affirming that she is good and the 48-hour window is closed. This episode <laughs> is so bad! And last week's episode was so good. How is the first half of a two-parter so good and this part is so bad? So the source blorps out of Paige's boyfriend and he's like, I'll get you next time, Gadget. And the inspector bursts into the, uh, bursts into the manor and he's like, uh -huh. with, with a camcorder, with a camcorder. With a camcorder and he's like, ha ha, I've caught you conversing with demons and the source just backhanded blasts him into a wall. I'm sorry, how much does the source suck? Usually when demons hit people with energy balls, they turn into like ash. We saw him ash that guy in the bathroom. Yeah, but no, he just used the kind of force bolt that pushes you into a wall so you can be stabbed by a coat rack. Well, maybe he wanted the inspector to be saved since he knew that they would be a problem for the charmed ones. No, that's too smart for him. Maybe he just thought that having a corpse would gross them out. <laughs> Maybe. Ew, a corpse in our house. But yeah, Leo Leo saves him and is like, yeah, because we're the good guys, so stop harassing us. Also, the source, when he was uh, th when he was teleporting away, was like, by the way, I totally stabbed your boyfriend, your boyfriend Phoebe, Cole. I mean, Belthazar, because I'm evil. Bye. So they run to go save Cole. Who's been bleeding out on a sidewalk for like six hours. It was daytime when he got stabbed and it's nighttime. He's in the middle of a sidewalk. Was no one just walking in this general area? I, I guess not. And, of course, Leo's like, I can't heal him. He's a demon. And I can only half heal him because he's only half human. And it's like, we already did this bit. Yeah, and last time when he was stabbed and you half healed him, it was enough to stop him from dying, which is the big thing you were trying he to do. He was strong enough to go kill the triad at that point. But no, luckily Paige has the dumbest idea ever to save Cole. Yeah, it's that she'll help. Wait a second. I'm half human. Is it possible that my half could offset his half? That doesn't make any sense! But it works. It, it works. Leo successfully heals Cole, and now everyone's gonna live happily ever after. Anyway, back at the precinct, Inspector Cortez goes to see Daryl and is like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all! And Daryl's like, okay, but are you gonna bust them? And he's like, not today. I don't remember if this guy's a reoccurring character for the rest of the season or if they were like, you know what? We're just going to get the guy suspects that the Charmed Ones are witches plot right out of the way right off the bat so we don't have to deal with it for the rest of the season. I honestly don't remember if this guy comes back. I just... Uh, whatever. We're wrapping up at P3. It's the end of the episode now. So they're wrapping it up. A uh, blonde cocktail waitress who I guess works at P3 now drops off a bunch of the drinks and everyone's like i'm so glad that nobody died and now we've got a new sister i guess so we we can just not think about prue anymore everyone just take a second to put prue out of your mind okay so you don't have to drink when you're out at a nightclub mm -hmm. but i just wanted to mention that Alyssa milano is drinking perrier instead of any kind of cocktail i don't know if that means anything but hmm. just throwing that out there yeah 
I mean, it would make sense if it was Paige, because we know Paige is sober, but... Hmm. Yeah. So, Piper's back on her, hey, I don't want to be a charmed one anymore kick. Like, that's been her thing pretty much since she started dating Leo. Well, I mean, she's like, I don't want my destiny to be... I have to give up my life for the stupid elders, so, you know. Which, fair. But they're like, no, we're, we help people, and now that we have a new sister, we can keep on helping people, and Paige is like, I think I heard me being referenced, and so I wanted to know, since I'm your sister, does that mean I own part of this club now? <laughs> well, it's funny, because she's like, so does that mean I can drink for free? Just kidding, I'm sober, I don't drink. And they're like, okay, I guess you're our sister. Come sit next to us. And Cole's like, hey, Leo and I were just going to be somewhere else. I love that he starts an excuse and then he's like, you know what? We don't need an excuse. We're just going to leave you three to bond as sisters or whatever. I'm going to go drink and try not to murder someone. I genuinely like how awkward this interaction is. There's there's a lot I like about the last scene or so. Mm -hmm. And... There's a bit where Paige makes a little kind of half joke about how she feels like she should bake them a cake, you know, to apologize. And Phoebe's like, do you bake? And Paige kind of pauses for a second. And she's like, no, I don't bake. And it's just this really awkward moment where someone's made a joke that completely didn't land. Yeah. Yeah. They ask her why she showed up to Prue's funeral. And she's like, I don't know. I just felt a connection. I, I, I. I think I feel like what Phoebe is getting at when she asked that is wanting to know if maybe Prue knew about them having a half sister. Mm. But she's like, no, I just, you know, I sensed that I belonged here with you guys. I sensed that I had lost a sister, too, even though I didn't know it yet. It's interesting that a later thing in Charmed and it's one of the few longer running plots uh, and it, it makes sense logically is Paige comparing herself to Prue. Mm -hmm. There's a whole episode later where she's trying to do a uh, dove creation spell that Prue was working on, apparently. Like, she's trying to finish it. Uh-huh. And there's, there, there's another episode where she talks about wishing that she could have met Prue, which I guess she never technically did. Yeah, she but never did. She, I mean, she hung out at P3, so she stalked her a little bit. Just some, just some light stalking. But I feel like later they kind of make it seem like she never interacted. Which I, I guess she never technically interacted, but she didn't, like, know Prue at all. Which, again, I guess she technically didn't. She didn't, yeah. So, Paige talks about being nervous about this whole witch thing. And they're like, hey, being a witch allows you to do some good things, too. And then we get an incredibly awkward scene, but I don't think it's supposed to be. I don't know. I feel like a lot of this is you can credit to Rose McGowan's acting. Okay. Because Phoebe and Piper bring Paige back to the back to the manor, uh, and they summon their mom. They summon they summon Patty's ghost, and they're like you can meet your mom now look we're, there there's good to magic too see we've brought mom back so that you can finally meet her and you know patty patty's she you know appears in the white lights and she steps out of the circle and becomes solid and she hugs Paige close and Paige does not look happy about this yeah it's it's very much um the end of the graduate yeah. Where it's it's completely her face undercutting the moment, but in a in a powerful way. Yeah, because I, I I feel like the scene was literally written to be like this is a big moment, this is this great thing for Paige, but honestly, Rose McGowan really sells this being in an emotionally incredibly complicated moment for her. Mm hmm I mean she she had a mother. Yeah. Yeah, she had a she had a she had a mother she lost too like mm -hmm. Paige is an orphan at this point both of her adopted parents died not all that long ago and this is a woman she has basically no connection to and this moment I feel like it sold as a, as a sweet you know her finally finding a family thing and it just 
Rose McGowan makes it clear that this is a complicated moment. Yeah, I mean, adoption is more complicated than... It, it, it's more emotionally complex than they are writing it to be, but Rose McGowan is playing it I do like much how, deeper. Yeah, I do like how protective she is of her identity as someone with a separate family from the Hollowells. There's an episode I'm very excited to talk about later where she meets Grams for the first time, mm -hmm. and she puts up a very clear boundary with Grams that she does not know her, like... She's like, I know you have this relationship with your other granddaughters, but we don't have that. Like, you you told your daughter that she needed to give me away as a baby. Like, I'm I, I can't have the same relationship with you you have with with Piper or Phoebe or Prue even. Yeah, I mean to be fair, she did to protect her from the elders, but yeah. So I feel like this was a really strong ending to a kind of, it, it, it's an okay episode. It's not bad. I mean, I'm. One or two very stupid things aside, it's a pretty solid episode of Charmed. It doesn't live up to the first half of this episode, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's who shot, Bur well, it's not who shot Mr. Burns part two. Because part one is perfect. Part one of who shot Mr. Burns is like perfect. And the second part is not quite as good, but it's still really good. So I, I regret making this comparison because this is not in the same ballpark as the first episode. But it's not it's not bad. It's not a bad episode. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to throw out there that we talked about the terrible, terrible conceit of this 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And next week's episode is Hell Hath No Fury. And... Guess what, y'all? We get to talk about personal gain. The episode, oh my god, this is the giant boobs episode, isn't is it? This is the giant boobs episode. The description <laughs> on Peacock does not mention the giant boobs. It just says Paige... Really? Yeah, it just says Paige steals the Book of Shadows to use the spells for personal gain. Okay, we need to remember to watch the preview for this one. Yeah. Because I, I am 10,000% sure the giant boobs thing is going to show up in the preview. Oh, absolutely. What's weird is we don't... What's weird is this is the one with the giant boobs, um, but we have an episode coming up called Size Matters. Not about giant boobs. Not about giant boobs. I'm actually really excited to talk about that episode, if only because it, it, it it's an excuse for us to talk about our favorite thing to talk about in Charmed. How terrible the personal gain rules are. Personal gain. <laughs> oh, I, I love personal gain. I mean, I don't. It's awful. It's the worst part of the show, but it's also great. You can just, you could just write around it. Yeah, it's fine. You don't have to worry about personal gain. We've already faced the consequences. Personal, personal gain is is to the Charmed universe what the Prime Directive is to the Star Trek universe, except a million times worse. <laughs> I have real issues with the Prime Directive. And personal gain. And personal gain, yes. But at least the Prime Directive is, like, a terrible thing that... I was gonna say humans, but, you know, humans and aliens came up with. Personal gain is, like, a universal rule that is terrible and makes no sense and is unevenly applied. Mm. Alright, so much like the Charmed Ones, we have our own power of three. Uh, the first power in our pack is... Premonition. Who in this episode is, was, or will become famous? I had no one. I had absolutely no one. Well, no, I mean, since this is a two-parter, I feel like I feel like we can still ride the premonition from last week when we talked at length about Rose McGowan, who has been brought in to play Paige. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we're still coasting on that. I mean, there's no, there weren't no, there were no characters in this episode that didn't appear. Well, I guess the father, the that family, but they weren't anyone. All right, the next power in our pack is Time Freeze. What specifically dated this episode? I have something. Do you have something? Um, okay, it's this is kind of a weird thing. Okay, I feel like we might have the same one. I, I want to hear what yours is. So Paige takes off and they're like, oh, how are we going to find her? Because we can't just call her. She doesn't just have a cell phone on her. Oh, oh, yeah. Like in, in a modern episode, that wouldn't be an issue. 
All right, uh, my, mine is actually different, and it is also weird and specific, and I'm not sure how accurate it is, but the trope of dropping a baby off at a uh, at a nunnery with nuns, mm. like, that feels really specific. I feel like if this was even 10 years later, it would have been at a fire station. When did safe drop zones become a thing? Because I, f- I feel like this would have been a safe drop thing with a, at a firehouse if it was a more recent thing well i mean no, I, th- I think it still would have been with a nun because charmed right and, and they made her think they were angels you know yeah but yeah i don't know i don't know when that became a big thing that people were talking about the fireman uh drop thing yeah adoption's actually really complicated in real life it's uh Let's not get into a whole thing about that, but it is more complicated than just dropping your baby off with the nearest authority figure. Yeah. And that will take us to our final uh, segment, telekinesis. What, if anything, genuinely moved you? I know Prue's dead, but we're not going to change it. It's still going to be telekinesis. It's not going to be orb telekinesis. Oof. Yeah, no. Telekinesis. Um, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of emotional resonance was lost in this episode when compared with the emotional powerhouse of Holly Marie Combs in last episode. I still, I'm going to stick with the thing I talked about at length. Uh, Paige's facial expression when she's hugging her mom is, I feel like it's not like moving, moving, but it conveys an emotion and makes you relate to that emotion, Mm -hmm. which I know is what acting should be, but it's the most emotionally moving part of the episode for me. I um I don't really have a, a telekinesis, but I do have a levitation. Ooh, what 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 uh what lifted you up? What made you you go fuck yeah and rise into the air? I'm sorry, it's just when when Phoebe sees Balthazar and she's like, "You look like hell," and he gives her that sexy half smile. I, I, I. I like what I like. Can't help it. This actually doesn't fit in anywhere. It's just we forgot to mention it, and it's probably my favorite exchange in the episode. The bit where uh, Daryl is asking the Charmed Ones what happened to the inspector, and uh, Phoebe says, I accidentally sent him to Timbuktu. And Daryl says, Timbuktu? And Piper goes, apparently it rhymed with undo. You know what? (laughs) I... (laughs) That that's a good moment of self awareness to contrast with the bad moment of self awareness where where Phoebe was like, "How come you could get it knocked unconscious if you're already dead?" All right, uh, so I believe that will about do it for this week. Yeah, I think it will. Our show is partially listener supported. If you want to be one of the supporters, you should head over to our website www.welcometotelevision.net and click on our Patreon link. We'd like to thank our current five dollar and above patrons. Beryl, Patricia, Rosa, Ryan, Maracruz, Benjamin, Kate, Jen, and Dan. If you'd like to support the show in other ways, you could always review us on Apple Podcasts. It helps other people find the show. We can also be contacted at I Love TV Zines on Twitter or at I Love Television Zines at gmail.com. So until next time, I'm Max. And I'm Tina. And this has been Welcome to the Hallwell Manor. Hallwell Manor.